EAA Chapter 166 in Hartford, Connecticut. It's the home of the Vans RV-12 build, where work continues on the RV-12 project here at the business end of the airplane, and in particular at the propeller. And like most major systems in a kit project, installing a propeller isn't exactly a slap-and-go project. And uh, tell us how it's done. Here's project lead, Rick Montero. All right. So uh, tonight we've been working on installing the prop, the two blades, and uh, then torquing it in. But before I get into that, uh, it's probably worth going over some of the components that we're working with. So obviously we have the engine that has a drive shaft that comes out, feeds into the, uh, the uh, gearbox here. And from the gearbox, there's a, uh, another drive shaft that connects to this flange. And then we have the, uh, a rear spinner plate. And attached to the spinner plate is this uh, hub and uh, there's a clamping hub that actually acts like a clamshell and it clamps the uh, two halves of the prop together um, to hold them. And then we have the forward spinner plate and then we have some of these uh, 3 16 or 5 16 inch bolts that go through the, uh, the clamping hub that hold the props in place. So the procedure for um, set, what we did tonight was set the pitch on the prop in addition to installing it. So what the procedure involved, first we have to level the airframe. We're using a digital level here. And what we did, uh, if you look in the back, we have a sawhorse set up on the tail cone with some spacers, foam spacer blocks. And uh, we set it up so that we get the uh, airframe pretty level, so almost zero. You know, do a preliminary install on the prop, uh, the two halves of the prop, bolt everything up, snug it, and then we level the prop and then get that within zero. And uh, then, as part of the procedure, you have a little tool that's given to you with the uh, kit that you place on the end of the prop right at this uh, white line um, at the very end here you place that there and then again you use the level and you measure the actual angle of the blade and if you come around to the outside you'll see and you can see that uh, we, uh, the requirement is to get it to 71.4 plus or minus one degree, and uh, we're at 71.335, so that's uh, almost perfect. So that's how you set the pitch. You basically get the airframe level, you get the uh, prop blades level laterally, and then you snug up the bolts a bit, you measure the angle, and uh, then you basically iterate. You uh, tweak the uh, torque on the bolts and move the prop as needed to get the angle that you're shooting for here. All right, so when you initially install the two prop blades, um, they have this tool they give you. And you can see it's got a number two and three, and that uh, talks to the diameter of these uh, pins. And there's a hole here that you can slip the uh, pin into. And what you do is you rotate the prop and the, the end of the blade, prop blade, has a pin on it. And um, that pin hits this, this other pin that you insert here as a stop. It acts as a stop, so you turn it and that gives you your initial setup on the prop angle. And then you uh, do the finish adjustment as I described through that procedure where you level the airframe, level the prop, and then you actually measure the angle on the props. And this pin here gets you within a couple of degrees, and then you do the fine tuning with the, uh, with the level and the procedure that I just described. So that's what we worked on tonight. We got this done. Um, once you have it installed and you got the pitch angle correct, then the procedure is to torque these bolts on the cl uh, hub clamp and you do it in a sequence where you're alternating and you tighten it up to 20 foot-pounds is what the uh, requirement is. So 
that was one of the things that we accomplished tonight. Uh, the other thing that uh, we were working on was checking the fuel system. So we put fuel in the gas tank and Mark is going to talk to you about how we tested the uh, fuel lines and, and uh, verified that we had no leaks. So as Rick mentioned, we did a little work on the fuel system. Uh, basically, uh, we've completed the fuel connections all the way through to uh, the engine, and we did do a preliminary pressure test on the, um, the fuel lines from here to the firewall, but we hadn't done anything since then. So all those uh, fittings have been installed and uh, torqued. And what we did as a first phase is we just poured about uh, two or three gallons of fuel into the tank just to see if there was any leaks. There, at that point, we didn't have any leaks. So what we did is we exercised the uh, fuel pump. And in doing that, it put pressure in the lines. And we did find, uh, I think, two locations where we had, uh, had to tighten up some fittings and stuff, one on the bottom of the tank and one in the firewall forward. So right now, we've actually pressurized the whole system and feel comfortable that the system is uh, not leaking. Next step will be to add additional fuel. Probably what we're going to do is fill the tank completely up. And that'll uh, check any of the other um, you know, enclosures and stuff that have been uh, done previously, make sure there's no leaks there. Once we're comfortable like that, we'll pull all the fuel out and we'll start a, a calibration. There's a whole process of calibrating the, um, the fuel level on the G3X.